Welcome back to the Necro Zoo. I am Bones. And in this one, let's go ahead and add one more figure to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now we are about to get into the Blackest Night Wave. The collector build figure will be Atrocitus. Really looking forward to jumping into this wave. This is gonna open up the door to all the Green Lantern figures. Pretty cool, now my collection is kind of busting at the seams. I am gonna have to look into adding some more shelving, but that also means that there will be more room for more waves, and there'll also be easier access for me to get to each figure, which I'm pretty much looking forward to. It's just gonna take me a while to move stuff around and add the shelves, but it will be done because of course I am gonna make more room for more awesome figures from McFarlane. Now this time we will be taking a look at Kyle Rayner, one of the Green Lantern Corps. Now he's more of like a go lucky Green Lantern guy, has a bunch of tradition in the comics. A lot of people know him. He does have a different uniform than this. This is the original version before he had the newer like 90s costume change. But all in all, I'm pretty happy to add some lanterns to the collection. And this lantern looks pretty lime in the packaging. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. But first, he does come with your standard black DC Multiverse stand. Not really needed, but sometimes useful. He also comes with his data file card. Nice to see some source material here on the front. You got a shot there of Kyle Rayner, a little different tint of green in the comic art compared to the actual figure we received. But, you know, give it a chance, it might grow on you. That lighter green color is a cool change of pace. And on the back, you do have some information. Pretty sweet, we'll add that to the collection. Now he does come with some accessories. He does come with his lantern battery for charging up his energy for his ring. Pretty sweet. And he also comes with this sword construct. Uh, it's broken or something at the tip. It looks kind of weird, but it is in like a lighter green kind of neon clear transparent plastic, which is really sweet. Cool detailing there on the sword, even though it's you know, just a construct, but all in all, pretty cool. Always love adding some constructs to the collection. And he also comes with our first piece of Atrocitus, which is the torso and lower pelvis. Looks really nice. I'll tell you something. This material that they're using is really awesome. It has like a vinyl red piece to it. I love the shade of red that it's in, but we will get into this more when we actually put the figure together. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at him. All right, first impressions, like I said, this is a different costume than the costume more people know him by. I'll take this, it's a cool start for our Green Lantern figures that are gonna be coming in. You could always reuse this and paint it a different color. Of course, you know the lanterns take up the whole spectrum and the, in the storylines, Blackest Night, Emerald Dawn, all these storylines, there's different color lanterns and different characters that are different lanterns. So, all in all, pretty cool. Has that lantern core emblem on, his, on the left side of his chest. Looks really nice. It is just a painted emblem. Nice texture on him. The likeness is pretty good, even though there are some kind of weird things that we'll get into. But all in all, first impressions, he looks pretty good. Uh, really nice feeling figure, like I've said before. I really like the materials that they're starting to use. It's just a really like nice feeling figure in hand. I just love the way these newer McFarlane figures like feel in the hand. It's like the touch of them, it's really nice. Now let's look at the head now. First things first, <laughs> they really farmered his color on his face. It looks kind of like he has clown makeup on. And it's weird because the ear 
is in the right shade as the neck, but once you get to his cheek, it just turns wider and wider towards the front of his face. And that makes his lips really stick out. They look like almost red just because of how white the, make, the, the, the paint that they use for the front of his face is. But we will be addressing that here in a little bit. Now the mask is fine. The mask is traditionally what Kyle Rayner's mask looks like. Fits his head perfectly. You got some nice bang curls going down. Looks pretty familiar. The hairstyle there in the front. But then another thing I do not like is the way they just have a dot of white for his eyes. Actually, the whole eyes should be white, like in the comic version. It just, it's just a clip, like a, uh, I don't know what it is about it, but it just looks cooler to me when it's all white instead of having that little iris of white in there. So we'll be touching that up as well. But we'll do that at the end of this review. But. I mean, it's a good head sculpt. I just think they messed up on the, the paint and then the eye. I don't like that. There's no, there's no like highlights of any colors in the hair. It's just a black color. So all those things we'll, I'll address here in a little bit. But the head actually does look pretty good. Now articulation, he does look down pretty easily. It's a little bit stiff. You could hear it, but he can't look up too much. I think the back of his hair hits his neck. And it, it, it looks up, but not really a lot. But he does have right to left. And then you could still tilt his head for some character. So pretty happy with the head sculpt. I just say the little details are what uh, I don't really like. But all in all, it did a good job of capturing the likeness of Kyle Rayner in his original costume, not his costume from later on but it looks pretty good let's take a look at the waist he does have side to side full waist rotation lower waist swivel upper chest swivel you can twist them get them in some cool poses now he does have a little bit of forward crunch more than usual but he leans back exceptionally for some cool flight poses. He looks really good there. Like I said, just feels good in hand. A really nice costume design. Pretty happy with it. You could line up the costume lines and get it to fit really nicely. Now let's take a look at the arms. Starting at the shoulder, he does have a cool butterfly joint. You have up and down, front to back, a lot of range of motion. Now they're starting to do these little cutouts where you could actually Put his arm forward in that cutout and get it more like across his body which is really nice innovation they kind of have one lower as well but one thing i don't like is these like butterfly bushings they just make them one solid color so when you actually like move it around it breaks up the paint a little bit because even underneath where it's supposed to be all black it looks it has that lime green color so that's another thing I'm going to probably be fixing here in a bit. But it does have good rotation, good movement. Moving down into the gloves. You have nicely painted white gloves. You have a cool sculpted ball joint for the wrist. He does have articulation in there. And on the other side, he does have his lantern ring. At least it is sculpted and painted in. Now you could tell they just hit it with a dab of paint. It doesn't really have any detail, but we'll take a look at that in a little bit. All in all, really happy with the arms though. That's pretty nice sculpt work. Now all of this does have a little bit of texture, kind of like little dot texture to give it some cool stylized sculpt work, but that's what we usually expect from McFarlane for these costumes. Now you can get them in a T pose. Not higher than that, but you can lift his arms up above his head by adjusting them. Pretty sweet. Let's take a look at the lower body. Now on the trunks, you do have that one paint mark. There's some pretty nice little wrinkles in the suit. Now I'm pretty sure people would think this is <laughs> like a plastic 
a defect or something, but no. It's actually like wrinkles that are sculpted into the suit. There's one right here, like on his right side of his hip. And then there's even a littler one on the left side. So that's really interesting. They went all out with the sculpt work. Now he does have some pretty sweet thigh rotation. So you do not need any thigh cuts. If you have his foot straight like this and you rotate his thigh, his foot swivels out. And that's all you need in a human form. So that works pretty good. Now he can kick really high and he could kick really high back. And this is allowed by the rubber trunks that allow you to move the legs in that range. And then when you put them back, they go back to their original form. Pretty cool design. Now you can cock out his knee. He does have that sweet hip swivel. Double jointed knees. Now these cuts in these knees are <laughs> kind of weird. They kind of went like at an angle cut. So a lot of times you'll get like weird decisions that they make they just like cut at the thigh muscle and i mean it doesn't hurt the figure at all you could still like bend the knees and everything it's just a weird way that they actually cut out through the sculpt but you know when you put it back to the way it's supposed to be it does have that cool silhouette straighten it back out you have up and down at the ankle pretty nice sculpted ankle ball joints right to left rocker and toe articulation taking a look at the lower body before we go nicely sculpted boots but they do have a smooth texture they don't have any kind of you know sculpt work at all but the ankle ball joints are sculpted which is nice but then when you move up into the legs they do have that same little like grain texture kind of like, like kind of uniform grain texture pretty nice Take a look at the bottom, no tread, but some identifying marks. Moving up the back, more of that cool grain work. The butt has like a wrinkle in there, pretty interesting. Moving up the back, more of that texture in the back as well, nice musculature. And he does have these cutouts backwards, so when you put his shoulders back, it actually goes into those gaps and you could get him in some cool, you know, flying poses and Gives, gives them more range at the shoulders, backwards. Pretty cool. All in all, love this figure. Looks pretty cool. Happy to add him to the collection. It's been a while since I've seen a new Kyle Rayner figure. But definitely, definitely happy to add him to the collection. Now, before we go, I already did do some changes on him. Let's go ahead and take a look at him. First of all, I did paint the butterfly bushing rings that go into the shoulder socket and I did them in a little bit of gloss black so they match the rest of the black and now when you pick up his arms it actually flows well with the paint it doesn't have the breakup of that lime green but at the top it keeps that lime green so that that flows with itself the way that the bottom does so real simple little fix that just makes the figure look a lot better especially when you're putting them in poses. Then I hit the ring. Now the ring, like I said, it was nicely sculpted. They just put a blotch of green paint. And what I wanted to do was give it a little bit of pop. So I actually put a little bit of silver like around the edge of it to separate it from the white glove. And then on top, I hit it with a glow in the dark green. And I just kept dabbing it and dabbing it until I built up a little coat of glow in the dark. And then I sealed it. So now that will be like that forever with a, a little bit of silver on the ring, like metallic. And then the glow in the dark green paint on the front really shapes it out nicely. Looks really, really good. So that's just two changes I've done. Now the last thing was the head. I just could not stand that <laughs> white looking face. So I you know it's kind of hard i show you the paints i used here and i use all these paints and then i used very little of it once i got it to match but it matched perfectly which was really awesome and i just put it on the you know the whole face and now it looks like it matches with the neck perfectly and gives it you know like a cleaner transition from the neck into the face 
doesn't have that white clown makeup look so really happy with that I did white out the eyes so that the whole thing on the inside is white instead of just a little dot of white and he looks it just gives him a more comic book superhero look like that I just like it so that's another little change I made now I also modded the head I shaved a little bit of the hair out of the back and then I put the regular notch in the neck peg and that way when you put the head back on now, he looks up a lot higher than before. And now with his face matching his neck, it actually blends in really nicely. And it actually like frees open the articulation of the rest, you know, in the rest of the directions. It's like a smooth movement now, which is awesome. And the final thing I did is I added some blue highlights to the hair just to, you know, give it some panache because it looks so bland and black at first. But now I'm really happy with them. Those little changes just, you know, take take them up a notch as a, as a figure. And he looks really, really good. But before we go, let's actually take a look at him next to some other Kyle Rayner figures that I do have in my collection. I have the original DC Universe Classics Kyle Rayner. Now this is the shade of green that people, you know, most likely think he should be, not like this lighter green, but I actually like the lighter green. It just pops on the shell and gives us some color. Since you know in the DC Multiverse sign there's a lot of grays and blacks. And now with this figure we have a little bit of color. And then they did make a second version of him in blue, where he was a blue lantern. But it keeps that same iconic look of the costume and mask. And then actually, Mattel later on made another Kyle Rayner in his 90s uniform that has more of a black and white like tone to it, but with a little bit of green in there. And that figure, it's, it's okay, but the face scope is a little bit uh. But I, I'm glad to have it in the collection. It's just another Kyle Rayner figure. But now I'm really happy to actually add this McFarlane figure to my DC Multiverse shells. Now I'm pretty happy to get into this wave. I wanna go ahead and get into building Atrocitus. We'll take a look at the zombie Batman, the zombie Superman, and also the, the Skull Firestorm. That'll build us up to Atrocitus. And then after that, I will be taking a look at Necron. But anyways, you guys keep hunting out there, keep collecting, keep customizing, and I will see you on the next one.